about love and romance. Uh, and this ought to be very interesting with, with uh, Brother Grady and, and Brother Draper and, uh, and you, Sister Sandy, that ought to be, uh, uh, but we're going to hear what the word of God says. And, um, and then the, we're not going to, we're not, we're not, we're not a dating site. So don't, don't, uh, don't get nervous, Brother Grady. <laughs> you got it covered, Bishop. <laughs> uh glory to god so let's let's look at two scriptures and uh if uh, someone will find genesis 2 and 18 and someone will find matthew 4 and 6 um genesis 2 and 18 and matthew 19 4 and 6 genesis 2 and 18 matthew 4 uh, uh 19 4 and 6 um the reason why it's important that that the church um, uh, shares uh, and teaches on proper relationships is very obvious. We we see that um, our our media, uh, our TV programs, uh, are, are, uh, are intentionally uh, having a distorted view of relationships and, and love. When you look at uh, uh, shows like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, uh, where they are, uh, are having a romantic interlude with a number of men and women, um, that's, that's not biblical, that's not godly. Uh, when we hear of some uh, some uh, leaders, government leaders, that talk about uh, assaulting women, uh, literally assaulting women. Uh, for example, for example, for us as we look at uh, at Bible and look at Scripture. So we want to we want to get some understanding of what is the church's role as we as we look at um, what the Bible has to say. And uh, as we look at Genesis 18, 2 and 18, and Matthew 19, 4 and 6, uh, in the beginning before the fall, God observed that people should not be alone. This was this, this was a this was a God's um, uh, uh, view of uh, of a relational situation. When he looked at Adam and he saw Adam and he said, it's not good for man to be alone. We'll read the scripture. Uh, and, and so, uh, and each uh, other uh, that came to know each other, uh, uh, intimate, inclusive, and in a proper godly balance, uh, sexual way. Um, let's look at Genesis 2 and 18. Someone read that, if you will. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So uh, man and woman together, it was a God idea. God made male and female, uh, uh, and uh, that was the intention of God. He made man and he made woman, uh, and God didn't make two men and for them to have relationship. He didn't make two women uh, for to have relationship, but God made a man and a woman. Uh, let's look at Matthew 19, 4. Uh, through six, what do you Matthew 19, four through six. And he answered and said unto them, have you not read that which, uh, I'm reading too early, just a second. Matthew 19, 4 and 6. 
Yeah, four through six. Okay. And he, and he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave his leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. So we see here that God made male and female, man and woman, uh, to be intimate, uh, exclusive, and and uh, and have sexual relation uh, in a sexual way. Uh, it is sometimes um, uh, that we have gotten so away from the biblical standard of relationship that uh, the enemy has sown into it um, uh, such a way that we have um, uh, children that are born out of wedlock that, 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 that suffer from the consequences basically of disobedience and, and sin. Uh, we, we have all kinds of, of immoral type things that pursue it out of that, whether it's, whether it's through rape, whether it's through incest, et cetera, et cetera, because of sin, the cause of sin. And, uh, uh, and I wanna be very, very direct today as we look at Valentine's Day and, but we look at it from a biblical standpoint, relationship from a biblical standpoint, uh, and what God says about it. You know, someone uh, in um, uh, uh, in many instances, many people in many instances ignore the biblical process and what the Bible says about it. Love and sex is is, is a gift to be enjoyed within the confines of marriage within the confines of marriage. There is an entire book uh, of the Bible, the, the, uh, the, song, the, the song of song, um, and, uh, and, and uh, which is called um, the many song of Solomon. But in, 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 the, in the original context of, of the canon, it's called the song of songs. Um, dedicated to the subject of love. Uh, in spite of its, its uh, possible uh, allegory and interlude there, uh, it remains uh, to be uh, the, the focus of God's design for humanity is with a man and a woman in the confines of marriage. Now, Romantic love is not to be uh, all the all end of all things, um, and partnership does not uh, uh, does not uh, uh, complete a person. Let me let me let me let's look at Matthew twenty two and thirty while I'm commenting. Uh, uh, when a person is complete in God. They are complete in God by themselves. As we look at Adam, Adam had no idea that uh, he was alone. God discovered that Adam was alone. And he said, it's not good for man to be alone. It wasn't Adam's idea for Eve uh, to be uh, created. Uh, it was a God idea. Because God knew about companionship. He had the companionship of the triune God in heaven. And Adam and God shared companionship. But Adam didn't have someone like him, like himself, uh, that he could have companionship uh, with. Um, uh, if somebody, amen, uh, we got some others on the, on the line tonight. Uh, and uh, we'd like for others to join in and share with uh, the reading of scripture. Uh, we're looking at Matthew 22 and 30. We hope you have your Bibles. We hope you have your notepads as we're talking about 
uh, about uh, Valentine God's way, Valentine's God's way. And we're looking at Matthew 22 and 30. Someone find that for us here uh, and be ready to read it. Somebody find 1 Corinthians 7, 29 and 30. I hope you're writing these scriptures down for you to be able to go back to them when we, when we are not on Bible study. 1 Corinthians 7, 29 through 31. Somebody find Psalms 37, I mean 73, 25 through 26. We're going to read these and, uh, and, uh, and uh, hear what God's word has to say about it. So Jesus is teaching that, uh, uh, that at the resurrection, people will not uh, be married and given in marriage in, in Matthew 22 and 30. Read that so we can get the context of what Jesus, step back up to, to verse number 28 and read through 30. I don't, I don't hmm. Someone, someone there can read that. Well, Come on, Bible scholars. Okay, Matthew's uh, twenty-two, and starting at verse twenty-eight. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be? In, be on the seven. For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection there is neither Mary nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Oh, the, the Lord is clearly uh, letting us get a glimpse of of his uh, knowledge and glimpse of the revelation of a marriage relationship, how it should be on earth. This woman had uh, had 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 husbands on earth, and they wonder well, whose wife would she be in heaven? And it said, in heaven there is no uh, marrying and giving in marriage. So Jesus was teaching that at the resurrection that people will not be married at the resurrection uh, and, and in, in the intimate sense that we talk about marriage uh, today. Now, in the writing in, in, in Corinthians, uh, we have to notice that, uh, that there, there are, are, are several areas that God's uh, vision of, of sexuality of, and the Apostle Paul elaborates uh, on celibacy. And so, uh, uh, and, and that's really singleness um, and how we should, we should walk uh, single and we should walk holy and we should walk in sanctification. Now, saints of God, this, I know this teaching is old fashioned in the sense that that uh, folks don't don't believe that that they could and should uh, live. But this is Bible. This is what God's word says. Praise God. I've been preaching this a long time. Praise God. And and but the church have gotten away from it. Sense of God, gotten away from it. Um, now let's look at First Corinthians seven twenty nine uh, thirty one. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. So we're talking about romantic love is not is not to be the all in all is not and, and, and partnership does not complete an individual but walking in the spirit is what completes us uh, in Christ and and so uh, 
uh, Psalm 73 says, uh, is in the same vein. Let's look at point number three, that, that romantic relationship should be based upon love and mutual submission. Now, this, this, is, this is one thing that, uh, that uh, we need to understand that's not necessarily understood by the general population, especially arrogant men. Uh, but let's, let, let, let's, let's see what the word of God says. Someone find 1 Corinthians, uh, the 13th chapter, and we just, we're just going to glam, uh, kind of glance at that for a minute, and then someone find Ephesians uh, uh, 21, Ephesians 21. So instead of, uh, instead of clues from popular uh, culture uh, or ancient world culture, the church ought to, ought to uh, uh, have a pure model of love as the Bible defines love. And uh, the biblical definition of love is not, is not, er is not eros, um, erotic uh, love. That's not the biblical. Uh, it's not phileo, which uh, in, in, in one sense of this, of this romantic love, uh, but it's phileo in the sense of, uh, I love my brother. Um, like uh, in Phileo, uh, one example is the city of Philadelphia called, called the, the, the city of love. Um, and um, so, but the Eros kind of love has been, has been celebrated even to the point that, that we, we take Valentine's and we take dating uh, to mean that um, uh, it's going to go further than the biblical example of what God wants us to do as Christians. And we must, we must walk in holiness, saints of God. We must walk in sanctification before the Lord. And it takes Bible teaching and it takes spiritual discipline, amen, to buffet your body to the point where you bring your thoughts, your imaginations, and your own desires under subjection of the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. And if, and if there's someone that you are, are, are talking to, then notice I said talking to, help me Holy Ghost with the talking to, uh, and someone that you are, you are interested in, uh, help me Holy Ghost with the interest, amen. We have several single folks on the line tonight Praise God, Amen. And several folks that you may have an an a, a inclination uh, to one day marry. Um, uh, the standards of God's relationship in in the in the love category is very important. Now, next week we're going to talk about love in the confines of marriage. After Valentine's, we're going to, we're going to talk about everybody done. Uh, would have had that sweetheart moment uh, and the, at Valentine's Day, we're going to talk about marriage, love in the confines of marriage and what that looks like. But in, in, in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, it is, it is really important that we, and, and we know that, 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 that chapter very well. And but let's look at it just uh, at a glance, um, uh, and see what the Lord is saying here. Now, uh, as we are uh, looking at uh, at, at uh, thirteen, uh, and that's called the love chapter. Uh, notice how the uh, uh, the apostle is talking about love. He, he there was a conflict with those folk that were that were had all the gifts. And they were demonstrating the gifts, and they were, they were, they were elevating the gifts above above how they treated people, and uh, and they became arrogant uh, about the gifts uh, uh, of the spirit, and and this one had this gift, and that one had that. Notice what he said. He said, "Though I 
I, I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, have not charity, which is love. I have become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, notice the gift name here, and the gift of mystery and the gift of knowledge. And though I have all faith so I can remove mountains, but I have not what? Love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all of my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, amen, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Notice the things that would make any, any televangelist, amen, really powerful if they had the gift of prophecy and, and mystery to, uh, and all knowledge um, and all faith, you know, to move mountains. Oh my, if a televangelist did any of these things, amen, they, they would have thousands of folks, amen, coming to their, to their, to their uh, revivals and coming to their meetings. Uh, but but, but the, 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 the apostle said, if I don't have love, <clears throat> then the prophet on the God side, when I get ready to meet God, I would have no benefits, nothing stored up for me because of the fact that it was done, amen, from a different platform than what God has, has us to do it from. It wasn't done from a platform of love. Saints of God, it doesn't matter how well you can sing, no matter how well you can preach, how well, how well you can pray, how, uh, how, how well you can do anything that we celebrate in the church if we don't love. Uh, love is the, the fundamental uh, element, amen, for amen, the body of Christ to come together in a cohesive manner. Now, I, I'm, I'm really troubled today about where the church is in this love relationship. I'm really troubled. I'm really troubled about evangelicals and the, and the, the, the church that we know of in the media sense uh, and, and those that are leading these churches. It, they don't sound like Jesus. They don't sound like God. Um, and and we, we have to make sure that we don't let our politics, amen, uh, dictate whether or not we're going to obey the Bible when the Bible says love. Now notice in, in verse number four, it said love, love uh, suffereth long, help us Holy Ghost. Uh, and love is kind, love is not evil. Love does not parade itself and puffs itself up, does not behave itself unruly, does not seek its own, uh, is not provoked, don't think evil doesn't think evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hope all things. It endures all things. Then it says love never fails. Grab a hold of this, amen, and hold on for a minute. Love never fails, but whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall mm -hmm. vanish away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, praise God, that which is in part shall be done away. Then the, the man of God said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. Help us, God, quit talking like children. Amen. For, amen. Uh, somebody took my toy, children. Amen. Um, I, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things, for now I see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but them, then shall I know just as I am known. Now abide it. This abiding means what, what's going to be left. What's going to be left after Corona? What's going to be left after after uh, uh, the impeachment? What's going to be left after all the shakedown? What's going to be left? Now abide it, faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these 
is love. Can you see what God is saying to us today? The fundamental thing is love. And the fundamental thing of love is carried out from, from um, the area of, of, of the, the relational love, one to another, brotherly love, praise God, uh, phileo, amen, and the relational love that comes with agape. Is there a place for eros? It most certainly is. Uh, but it's in the confines of a marriage relationship, of a marriage relationship. Now, the fourth thing is there is uh, a, 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 there is a seven, there is a time uh, for love uh, that, um, and there is a time uh, that uh, is not for the various, let's look at the season that we're talking about. Let's look at, at Ecclesiastics three and eight and Solomon uh, uh, four and, and, and well, Ecclesiastes three and eight. And we'll see what, what uh, we're talking about. Ecclesiastics three and eight. Now, there are seasons when romantic love is not appropriate. Rather, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is not beneficial or the calling of God uh, uh, on your life. There's a time, because uh, there's a time and a season for everything. So let's, let, let, what does that verse say? Uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 8. You want to read it? Time to love and time to hate. Time of war and time of peace. So the, the, there is a, there's a time and a season uh, for all things, but there's a time for love, and it goes on and mentions the other thing. Uh, now, the rule... That that that, that 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 carries around this is that dating without without a desire of of marriage, dating without the desire of relational connection in the sense of biblical equivalent equivalency. Uh, in other words, are you compatible biblically? Amen. Uh, has to bring the question. Amen. Uh, what is the outcome of, of this relationship? Let me talk to you a minute. Amen. So marriage uh, as, um, as a, a rule comes from uh, the approach of marriage and biblical way of dating that says, I am looking for who God is wanting me to look for. In other words, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't date like the bachelor. We don't date like the bachelorette. Praise God. Amen. We look for somebody, amen, that's holy. He that findeth a wife finds what? A good thing. And, and, uh, and she that finds a husband many times finds a mess. So there's a, there's a process in what God wants us. Let's move on from there. Praise God. We don't want to spend too much, too much time there. I got too many single folk on the line. Praise God. They've been tonight. So let's look at, at, at the fifth point that we need to look at. Let's turn to Ephesians 2, 4, and 7. Amen. Talking good, Bishop. <laughs> All right. Let's look at Ephesians 4 and 2, 4, and 7. Amen. Uh, uh, see, your worth is not determined by your relationship status. Uh, your worth is not determined by your relationship status. You know, I'm, I'm now in, in, my, in my youth, God just, God just blessed me to have, to have a great uh, godly woman. He just blessed me with it. Amen. I, I didn't have the, I didn't have the, I didn't have the spiritual uh, mentality or the spiritual eye. Uh, to look for a, 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 godly, a godly woman in the sense of, uh, of, of, of marriage. I, I, was, I was looking for, for uh, 
Well, I ain't gonna tell you what I was looking for, but I found, but I found that too. Praise God and Sister Blake. Praise God. Amen. But uh, God helped me. Praise God. Uh, when I didn't, when I didn't know what a what a wife should look like, God helped me. Praise God. And let me tell you something. God will help you. Amen. To see what a man, a husband should look like, what a wife should look like. God will help you. Amen. I'm, I, 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 I'll deal with the other side next week. Now, now your worth is not found, amen, in your relationship status. Sometimes, thanks of God, you know, married folk make single folk feel like something's wrong with them. Uh, you know, they, you know, yeah, yeah, a girl, you ain't find a, found a man yet. Uh, wait, or man, you ain't found a wife yet. Uh, and uh, so your status is not based upon your, your relationship, praise God, you know. Our worth is, is found another way. Let's look at Ephesians 2, uh, 4 through 7. And, 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 and let's see where our worth comes from. Where, where does it come from? What, is, what does it say? Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measures of the gift of Christ. Okay. Wherefore, he said... <laughs> When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto okay. men. Now, let's talk that again, Sister Sandy. To every one of us is given what? Grace, according to the measures of the gift of Christ. So to everybody, is God has given everyone a measure of, a measure of faith and everyone God has given grace. In other words, God mm -hmm. has given us an, an, an anointed ability. Your, your value is based in what God has already given you. You already got the goods. You're not, you're, your goods are not determined. You're not determined where, uh, by uh, whether or not you're married or whether you're not married. Praise God. God has already given you the measure of, of, of or given you grace. Praise God. He's already given you the gift, praise God, to you. And what else does it say? Uh, let's see. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? What do you mean? He what that you mean? Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2? No, I'm on Ephesians 4 and 7. Yeah, he Ephesians, says, Ephesians, <laughs> Ephesians 2, chapter 4 two, and 7. Chapter 2, verse 4 through 7. Yes. Oh, hold on then. Mm -hmm. You had it when that, you were talking about them single folks. Yeah, that you messed up talking about them single folks. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was sounding good, too. Oh, okay. It sounded good to me too, Bishop. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna start at seven. Yeah, now I want you to hold on to four. Uh, hold on to four and, and, and go back to two. Okay, I'm gonna go two and seven, right? Two, two four. four. Yeah. Two and four. Okay, well, here we go. But God, okay. which is four, four through seven now. Uh two okay. four. Okay. All right. Uh, Two, four, three, seven. Got it. Yeah. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love. Were with he loved us. Oh, now, now, Even, now, now, now wait, 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 wait one second. Uh, now, you, God in His great love, He loved who? Us. He loved us. So, if you're looking for a lover, you might already have. Him. Now. If, if, if Brother Derek was on the line, I got to make sure and see, uh, and ask Sister Wilma, is Brother Derek uh, uh, on the line? Uh, Sister Wilma, is Brother Derek in the room? No, sir. All right. <laughs> well, you tell him, you tell him that I, I was talking about him tonight. Uh, Brother, Derek, Brother Derek got so mad, he walked out of church. <laughs> when I was teaching something like this, and and brother Turk said, now he got a wife. He goes he he goes home to a wife every night. I ain't going home to nobody. And he tell me and he tells me that uh, 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 I ought to be in love with Jesus. Jesus is in love with me, and that ought to be enough. 
and and he hit the door. <laughs> but but the spirit brought it back. <laughs> brought him back, praise oh. God. Amen. Put him in the car, drove him 30 miles, praise God. And now he got a real wife. Praise God. Amen. And 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 that's what God will do for you. Amen. When you hold on a minute, amen, and let God do it. Praise God. Amen. He told me, he said, if he hadn't come back, amen, ain't no telling what where he would have been and, and, and what would have happened in the sense of a relationship. But God, amen, made the difference. Praise God. Now, he said, now, go, go ahead and, and start over, Sister Sandy. I had to, I had to pause for, for station identification. For me. <laughs> go, go ahead and start there again. Okay. I'm going to start at four. But God, with, who is rich in mercy for his mm -hmm. great love, wherewith he loved us, even yes. when we were dead in our sins, has quickened mm -hmm. us together with Christ by mm -hmm. grace. Ye are saved. So your, 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 your worth is not determined by your relationship status. It, it's not determined mm -hmm. by that. Now, uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to use Brother Derek's line right here. Praise God. You said, well, Bishop, amen, you've been married for years. So you, 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 uh, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know you know, what, what, what's, what's really going on, Bishop, you know, because you've been married, you've been having Sister Blake for years, you know, and, uh, and I, I don't, uh, God gave me grace on the marriage side. God gave you grace on the single side. Praise God. Amen. It's, it's the same grace, but the measure is, is enough for you, and the, mm -hmm. and, the, and the measure is enough for me, because I may tell you, praise God, amen, you don't know what married folk got to go through, praise God. And some folk that are married want to be single. And some folk single want to be married. <laughs> amen. And I will, I will, I will ask y'all to say amen, praise God. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So it takes grace on both sides of the relationship, praise God. And and the grace of God anoints you for that, for, for that situation. When you're married, amen. It, it anoints that love relationship. So when you have when you have disagreements, amen, you love through those disagreements, amen. And you love to the point where you say, God, God, whatever God has joined together, let no man put us. It takes grace to make it through some conflict sometime when you're married. So, so don't hang your hat on the fact, amen, that if I could just get married, I'll live happily ever after, praise God. Because if you get the wrong somebody, Amen. You hate the day you said I do. Amen. If you wish you had said I won't. Amen. But God, amen, gives you grace to be single. Praise God. And God gives you grace to be married. Praise God. And if you have a desire as a single person to be married, praise God, God will anoint somebody on the other side. Praise God. To have the same calling for you as you have for them. Amen. But both have to have the calling and according to God's word and walking in God's word and God's truth. Praise God. Well, I didn't mean to get that deep into that. Amen. Uh, but 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 we did. So so uh, uh, um, so investigating uh, in in uh, how marriage and how this is is shaped. Everything is shaped by the grace of God. And the grace of God is the anointing of God on your life, amen, to live, amen, how God has you walking in right now. He's anointed you, amen, to live in victory. Whether you're married or whether you are single, he's anointed you to walk in holiness. He's anointed you to walk in victory. And, and God, will, God will reveal those things to you, amen, as, as situations unfold. Yes, he will. Praise God. Now. Now, let's look at number seven. And, that, and seven is the last uh, thought that I want to give you or, or whatever number it is. This is the last thought I want to give you here today, tonight. And let's, let, let, let's, we're, we're, gonna, we're going to, uh, let's, someone find, and I need three people here to find, uh, I need four people to find um, these scriptures. One person and say, I will, I got it. Some folk, I'll get it. 
somebody find Hosea 2 and 14. Somebody just say, I'll get it. I'll get it. All right, Brother Draper. Amen. Isaiah uh, 62 and 5. Somebody say, I'll get it. Did you say 62 and 5? 62 and 5, yes. Okay, I'll get it. All right. Thank you, Sister Wilma. Amen. Jeremiah uh, uh, 2 and 2. I got it. All right. Now, and, and Sister Sandy, if you could find uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 11 and 2. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 2. Now, uh, now here, here, here's the thought that I want, I want to pin these scriptures on. Um, romantic love is a symbol and a pointer to our unique relationship with God. Let me, let me say that again. Romantic love is a symbol and a pointer to our unique relationship with God. Now, let me let me let me set this up. Now, Scripture is is um, is packed with metaphors about God's betrothal to His people, uh, and uh, and this comes through the voice of of the prophets. Uh, uh, and so uh, we, when, 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 when we, when we see what scripture says uh, about it, he used uh, in Hosea's uh, uh, situation, a unique, a unique, and um, I don't know if I could, I could have hung in there like Hosea, uh, but he, he uses a very unique uh, way of extreme situation. Uh, somebody said, well, it may be an allegory and, uh, and others say because of, of the way the, of the biblical, biblical structure is laid out of Hosea, uh, uh, Hosea was an actual person that went through these actual things. But romantic love is a symbol and a pointer to our unique relationship with God. So when we look at God and his relationship with us, we got to ask ourselves, amen, are we and are we prepared to have that kind of relationship and love for our spouse? And, and uh, going in, the word of God says clearly in Ephesians, it says, it says, husband, love your wife uh, as Christ, you know, has loved the church the way Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. You know, uh, I shared with somebody uh, uh, earlier uh, today, you know, uh, uh, women, a good, a good sign of a good man is, is what, he, what he does on the front side uh, before you get him. Uh, now, submission is what men used to say to dominate women. Girl, the Bible says you submit unto me. The Bible says you obey me. Uh, well, they had no clue of what submission meant and what obedience meant. We'll talk about that later in depth. But any woman would be would be uh, 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 very honored if a man on a consistent basis, if it was raining outside, the man said, baby, I don't want you to get wet. He runs out to the car and gets the umbrella soaking uh, wet when he comes back in because it's pouring down rain. He puts the umbrella up and then he, he, she gets under the umbrella, walks up to the car, opens the door. She gets in on her side. Not a drop of rain gets on her. While he's putting her in, he's still getting wet. And then he comes around and gets in the car. And, and she had no problem a woman in a situation like that had no problem with submitting under that umbrella because that man got the umbrella for her to, to, to not get wet. She had no problem in submitting under 
when the sacrifice, amen, was for her covering. So covering is about relational sacrifice uh, to cover. Now, if you look at it as Christ, Christ made a relational choice, amen, to sacrifice his life to cover our sins. Um, now, uh, uh, men going into any kind of relationship, the relationship shouldn't be sensual. It should, it should be uh, in the sense of I'm honoring this woman, amen, in this relationship, even if it's dating, uh, as, as uh, someone who I am, I am looking at as a potential candidate for my wife, for my wife. Now, now you say, well, you know, uh, dating these days is not about looking for a husband. Dating these days is about not being, uh, not going out by yourself to eat or whatever, whatever, whatever. But uh, we cannot put ourselves in, a, in, in situations of compromise or put ourselves in a situation where the enemy uses uh, uh, temptation and lust and even, and even uh, destroying the idea of who we are by ungodly type of relationship. Let me let me go deeper with that with this scripture here. So let's look at Hosea uh, two and fourteen. Hosea got caught in a situation. You know the story. Hosea got caught in a situation where God used him to to show how much he loves us. Hosea two and fourteen says what? Therefore, behold, I will lure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort comfortably unto her. So uh, uh, Hosea, uh, after all that he went through, he, he had a desire because uh, Gomer was his wife. Uh, and, and Hosea went through some stuff. You read that, you read that story. Uh, and uh, and you you'll understand deeper uh, what that's. Let's look at Isaiah sixty two and five. Okay, that's me. Um, uh, where you go? For as for as a young man married the virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. You, you see the comparison here. Uh, 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 God said, I want you, I want you to get an earthly image of, of how I feel about you. And then and then and then do what I do in, in that earthly relationship. Uh, oh my goodness, you know, uh, what a comparison. Now I, uh, I must admit, praise God, I I was I was not living the, the kind of life, praise God, amen, to even understand what God was looking at when he looked at my unsaved uh, a, a situation like, like Gomer. And God loved me so much, and he loved me from, from a Jose and Gomer standpoint. I wasn't even here with, in the place where Isaiah is talking about it, praise God. But God loves us. Now, that doesn't mean that we, that we go out and, and, and do like God uh, did, uh, what Hosea did with Gomer. We have, we have things in place because we have an image and teaching and the word that gives us a, a good image. You said, you said, Bishop, you're going pretty deep with, uh, with just Valentine, just Valentine, just, it, it's just some flowers, it's just some candy. You know, you're going pretty deep with this thing, you know, but, but, but Saints of God, I want, I want us to understand as we go into this day, uh, what it looks like. And then next week, we'll, we'll talk about some things that, that, Got the, got the candy in it. All right, let's look at Jeremiah uh, 2 and 2. What does it say? Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thy espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that thou was not sown. So, uh, uh, Jeremiah is talking about the waywardness uh, uh, and of of Israel in, in in this context. You have to read the whole whole chapter, understand the context in which God was 
was was talking about a a a romantic love uh, relationship as a symbol of our relationship with God. Uh, let's look at Corinthians eleven and two. Okay. Second Corinthians eleven and two. Second Corinthians eleven and yeah. two. Eleven and two. Mm -hmm. I have, um, for I am a jealous over you with a godly jealous, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chastened virgin to Christ. Praise God. Now, now, when we when we when we look at the totality of what we just read, this means that marriage is a is a gospel signpost. Is reminding the world that Jesus love of Jesus's love for his people. Marriage is a is a signpost. It is a T-shirt that basically said says I'm I'm an example of Jesus' love for the church. Me and my husband, me and my wife, we are living out the example of what G how Jesus loved the church. Uh, can 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 that be a t-shirt that you wear and you wear it in truth? If it's not, work on it. Praise God. You got to work on it. So the final, the final uh, uh, area of scripture, let's, uh, let's look at it together, is 1 Corinthians 7 and 39. 1 Corinthians 7 and 39. Um, and um, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 39. Let's get there together. Uh, 7 and 39. 7 and 39. Are you there? Somebody read that for, for me. And the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. And what does 40 say? But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment. I think also that I have the spirit of God. That this 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 refers to a, a wife who is bound by law. Uh, as long as her husband is living. Uh, uh, God's attitude about marriage is that until death do we part. God's attitude about marriage is not the Hollywood version. It's not the Hollywood version. Now, does that mean that, praise God, that, that uh, in all of our lives that maybe something has happened, praise God, and, but now that you're saved, now that, now that you, you're lined up with God, God is, is, is wanting us to examine our love relationship, to examine how we are walking in God with our spouse, and the commitment should be there that this is an, until death do, do we part. Uh, the commitment should be there. We wouldn't think, we wouldn't dare think that God would divorce us. But God said, I'm married to a bachelor. Praise God. I'm married to a bachelor. In other he married to a wayward, a wayward church, a wayward people, a wayward bride, because of, of the fact that so much so, amen, that uh, that uh, uh, as as Jesus is is uh, is walking and giving gave his life for the church, for his bride. Uh, that's how the, the relationship is pictured here. And I wanted to read that last scripture. Just to, just to have you to go back to it, go back to it, pull it up in, in your concordance and, and, and look at the depths of that. Read that chapter in, in Corinthians because this chapter leads right into, into uh, uh, the love chapter and, and understand a little deeper what God is, is saying in, in relationship. Now, next week, we're going to we're going to 
look at two slices of the scripture in in the area of relationship and then we're going to be finished with with our relationship series our love series um uh probably the next week because i want to end up on on another in february uh in the relations of 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 how we should deal with social justice how we should deal with with uh our our means of relating uh, as people under God, one people under God. But next week, we want to get a little deeper. Now, I want you to, if you have any questions, I want you to write them down. Shoot me uh, a text. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you got anything that you want to look in depth, if you have any anything that you are, you said, well, I, I really wanted to say something about this. I want to ask a question about that, but I, 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 I didn't do it. Um, send it to me in the text and let me let me respond to you either privately or respond next week in, in, the, in the Bible study. Come to the Bible study with your Bible, uh, ready, to, uh, ready to dig in word by word, line by line, and precept by precept. Uh, I'm old school in my teaching. Praise God. There's no there's no subject. There's no there's nothing that it that the church shouldn't be able to talk about. Uh, and so we want to find the biblical perspective of how to live for God in a victorious way. Father, I thank you right now, God, for for this Bible time that we have, this way that we can get into the word, that we can read scripture and that we can uh, share and that we can um, we can understand. Uh, the depths of the scripture. Father, we thank you for, for um, this time, for those who have taken the time to get on, on, uh, on the, the, the line today because they love your word and, uh, and we want to come together to go deeper in the word. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Amen. there are times when we will have uh, comments and open discussion. Um, uh, this is a little sensitive uh, type of 